and their natural law in the life of every people.
But this one that we are talking about, it shows that there is something at stake that the enemy is contending for. And that is why God now said, I'm going to go above your opponent. I'm going to go above your adversary. I'm going to go above those who are gathered against you. Those who are stronger than you, that you cannot fight. Either in the physical or in the spiritual. God said, I'm going to come in and I'm going to fight on your behalf. Amen. For him to do that, you must seek his advocacy. You must seek his what? His advocacy. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 3 he said, come upon me. I will answer you. In other words, when there is trouble, run to him. When people have trouble, you know, they call the name of their mother or they call their mother wherever their mother is or call any other person. But he said, seek his advocacy. Come upon me. I will do what? I will answer you. There is assurance. His lie is never blocked. It is always open. When you call, you don't enter into voice message. It's a, it's a lot line, it's open. When you call, there is no other person that is on the line that will keep you waiting. I said, please wait. You know, there are occasions that I will call pastor, it will always be, please wait. And then, <laughs> the line will go through. I said, I'll drink and I will set my phone like that too. So, he said, call upon me, I will answer you, and I will show you what? Great and mighty things that you do not know. So when there is trouble, run to him and seek his advocacy. Amen. Amen. In Psalm 3, I love David so much. Whenever there is trouble, you will always run to God. In Psalm 3 and verse number 4, he said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. As you call upon him, whatever the situation may be, whatever the challenges in your life, whatever the trouble, as you call upon him, he will hear you. There is only one person that the Lord will hear in this meeting today. I am the one. So if you are the one, shout hallelujah. And then in verse number 7 of the same chapter, he said, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. In other words, come quickly and rescue me. Because somebody is contending. And so the moment you call, I know he will hear you Amen. and he will answer you Amen. and he will turn the open situation around. Amen. So you need to run to him for help. In Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous will run into it and be what? And be saved. The righteous will run. So that's the reason why you need to go to him because whenever there is trouble and when you call upon his name, he will answer you. I love a man in the Bible. The man Ezekiah. In Isaiah chapter 38 verse 14. Isaiah 38 14. He said, like a crane of swallow, so did I chatter. I mourn like a dove. My eyes fail from looking upward. Oh Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. That is, you know, the king seeking the advocacy of the Lord. 
This is one of my classic messages that I love so much. It's a, it's a verse that I love and I preach from time to time. But look at this man. He's the king. He's the president. He's the number one man in the land. But there was trouble in his life. And nobody in his cabinet could help him. And the only person that could help him was God. He quickly realized that the only person that could help him is God. So he cried unto the Lord. Okay? And he said, please God undertake for me. This problem is beyond me. And I know the Lord will advocate for you today. Amen. He will rescue you. Amen. You will not be the same again. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Question very quickly. Who are the contenders? Because we said there are forces that are fighting. Who are the contenders? Psalm 2 answer that very quickly for us. I'm sure many of us know it offhand. He said, why do the heathens rage? And the people imagine vain things. Who are the heathens? They are those who do not have covenant with God. They are those who are not in relationship with him. So why do they, why do the heathens rage? Why are they out fighting? Why are they contending? What is at stake? What are they looking for? Why do the heathens rage? And the people imagine vain things. Then the kings of the heart set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. So there is something that is at stake. And if you look into your life, there is something precious that the devil is after. In your life. That's why he's giving you the battle of your life. And you are wondering. Am I the only one? No. There is something that is at stake. He's interested in. But because you are not. You know. Conscious of that. Or you are not cognizant of it. So you just let go. But tonight. You are going to take the battle to the gate of the enemy. Amen. So. We have forces of the healing that are raging. And then when I look into the Bible, I realize that there are some personalities that have forces that are contending with them. What I call the household enemies that are stubborn and they are contending with their life. Look at the man Joseph. His father and his brethren were contending with him. What were they contending with? They were contending with his dream. There's a dream that you have. That you yourself don't even know how precious that dream is. And when I'm talking of dream, I'm not talking of dream dream. I'm talking of big ideas. I'm talking of things that you have in your hand and you don't know how valuable it is and what it can turn to. But then there are people that are looking at it and they are saying that except we checkmate this, this man, by the time this dream is fulfilled, then will become his subject. It could be in the neighborhood. It could be among your friends. There was a friend who shared an idea with another friend of his and he said, you know, I'm thinking of this thing. It just came to me as, as, you know, as an idea. And the other friend listened very well. And by the time he left, he went to execute it. May you not share your dream with those who will, with those who will leave you empty. Yeah. No, you don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> of course, you know the story of Joseph. It took him 
17 years before the dream could be fulfilled. The, the peace in his life was thrown into the pit. He was in Potiphar's house. He was in prison. And finally, he got to the palace. And I pray that no matter what the absolute enemies are doing, you will get to the point that God has proposed for you. Amen. Say with me, Father, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, name of no matter the forces that are contending with me, my dream shall be fulfilled. My dream shall be fulfilled. No matter the forces that are contending with me, my dream shall be fulfilled. Let somebody say amen to that. What shall we say about the man David? That's another one. The problem of David was his household. They looked at him, they said, this naughty boy, God be playing with shit. But that is the man that God has proposed, you know, to be a star in the family. But God was preparing him anyway. After he was anointed, and then he went into the battlefield, he saw, you know, the, he saw Goliath. Define the army of the Lord for 40 days, and nobody could come up, even Saul. He would challenge them, the Lord would challenge them, and then they would go back again. 40 days. And then he got there, and he said, Is there not a reason? Actually, his brother said, You know, the five star general said, You nosy boy, we ask you to keep sheep. What are you looking for here? What do you know about war? But they didn't know, like he said. In, in the book of Psalm, he said, Thou hast taught my hands to war and my fingers to fight. God was teaching him. And then he got there and he said, Look, Goliath, there are nothing. If God can help me to handle lion, I don't know how David managed to kill lion. I've watched some things about lion, some documentaries. I don't know how this guy. Wow. And also, you know, the other animals like that. And he will rescue the sheep from their mouths. And he said, Goliath, there yeah, I walk over. Hallelujah. For those of you who are football freak here, okay, let's be that alone. I'll make some people to wake up. <laughs> you know, let me say you are nothing. Say you are nothing. And of course, you know the end of the story. He was already in the service of Saul. But he was recalled back again. His father's house was calling him back. Until a point in time when Saul said, you will not be in my service permanently. When, you know, the spirit of insanity came on him. But a force was always drawing him back. That's a contention. There are some of us here that the forces from our background are drawing us back. From time to time, you see yourself having dream, finding yourself in your village. A brother called me some time ago and he said, Pastor, please pray with me. Um, you know, I can see a force wanting me to return back. A kind of retrogression. He said it, you know, in my language. And we prayed. Because there was a force, he shared the dream he was having, you know, consistently. When you begin to see certain things happening, it's a force that is contending with your destiny. But this morning, they will be terminated. God delivered David eventually from, you know, household enemies. 
How about Jephthah? Jephthah is another man in Judges chapter 11, from verse 1 to 11. His household gathered against him and they were contending with his inheritance. But the Lord delivered him. The Lord that delivered, you know, Jephthah will deliver you. Amen. I'm going to come back, you know, to some other ones again. But I want you to see this. What are they contending for? What is the enemy contending for? I've mentioned one, the enemy is contending with your dream. You may not see it, but they, may, they might have seen it. Right from the day you were born. They have seen that dream and they are looking for how they are going to stop it. But you are unstoppable. Amen. I said you are unstoppable. Amen. As a dream that God has given to you. They have seen the star. The star of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the wise men followed that star. Until they got to where he was. And he said this is the, this is the man. Your star will shine. Amen. I said, Your star will shine. Amen. And that is the reason why they are contending. You may not see what they are saying about you. Remember when we were young, some elderly fellow men will look at a child and say, ah, This is a special child. Have you ever had something like that? Okay, they say, This is a special child. This child is unique. It could be by reason of divination. Or they can see beyond. And they begin to either make effort to see that what is in the life of that child is not fulfilled. But you have come to the Lord. And they will stop their operation. Amen. They have seen that this is the one that will rescue the family. Particularly if you come from a big family, from a big compound, and everybody, you know, wants to protect their own area so that this child will outshine the other one and they can go to any length. And if they know that this is the Joseph of the family, they will make every effort to frustrate that destiny until God will come to intervene. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What are they contending for? They are contending for your Samuel. When we talk of Samuel here, we are not just talking about the fruit of the womb, but we are talking about something that is precious, that you are waiting for and they know that once the Samuel come, there is going to be a glory. There is going to be a turnaround. So they want to make every effort that the Samuel will not come. But your Samuel will come. Amen. Can somebody say, my Samuel will come? My Samuel. Somebody say, my Samuel will come. My there is nothing the Penina can do. Your Samuel will come. Amen. Can you declare again, my Samuel will come. Said, said to him 
that we have the document to this property. And then she was able to make the man realize some historical facts. He said, she said to him, he said, I remember when you were coming on your mobile to come and build this place. <laughs> History. <laughs> but they have to, you know, while and while before the thing will move.
suddenly now shouted the name Jesus. Hear me. When he woke up, he found that his wrist was paining him. Not only that, he was sweating. Not only that, the whole bed was scattered. It was a real struggle. They were contending. And a dangerous birthday. What was the enemy contending for? Huh? His life. Life was ebbing out of him. So, there are days in our life that the devil is targeting. It could be your birthday, it could be your wedding anniversary. And that is why we should be very sensitive. The devil is looking for something. It could be a day to your promotion. Something will happen. I said it is just an accident. No, or a matter of coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It is because there is something that is at stake in your life. I don't know what the devil is contending for in your life. It could be a day that they will ask you, come and collect this letter of appointment. And then something will happen. I remember very well. I was preparing for my A-levels. Don't ask me which year. <laughs> the day I was to start the first paper, Echo 101, I still remember. From nowhere, I just, I was just truly. And I managed to get to the exam hall 45 minutes to finish. A paper of three hours. Of course, you know the result. <laughs> Straight away.
She left home early, quite, quite all right. And by the time she hit the road, there was heavy traffic. She came out of that one, she got to, you know, the bus station where she bought the transport, and as they were going on the way, there was accident. She came out of that one, she had to stay on the road, and, you know, somebody had to help her to get to her destination. Before you say, Jack, it was evening. I was already leaving office, and I said, well, I think I've waited enough for money till now. Eventually she came and she narrated her ordeal. I knew the devil was contending for marriage, her deliverance. Because she was over and I was concerned. I said, look, something is going on in this area. But blessed be God, that day the Lord delivered her. She's married with children now. Amen. So whatever the devil is contending for is not ordinary. There is something in your life that is precious that the devil is contending for. Look at your life. How is it that the day that that thing is supposed to happen, that is when an evil thing will come up. It is because there is something special in your life that the devil is contending for. A lady was to come for deliverance, having been cancelled, and she made up her mind that she's coming. And she got to her car, crank it, and the engine locked. The first thing that happened was that she was coming down from the stairs, and she sprained her leg. She said, well, whether you like it or not, I'm coming with this leg sprained. Then the engine of the car locked, and she had to charter a taxi to come for her administration. Now, they have told her before that all the sea animals are her cousins. So she doesn't eat fish. Can you imagine salmon? Eh? She doesn't eat tilapia. Pepper ah. soup. So, most of our friends, when they are cooking all those stuff, they will call her and say, you know, we are cooking, I say, you people are bad, you are cooking my cousin. That's what they told her, she believed it. So, anything sea animal, she doesn't go near because they told her she belongs to the water kingdom. And so, she must not eat anything that comes from the sea. Whatever taboo they have put upon your life, it shall be broken this morning. Yeah. Some people may tell you don't eat okra. Serious high up. Say, look, anything draws you don't eat. Eh? <laughs> the Lord will show mercy on you. By the time the Lord delivered her, the auntie that invited her to come happened to prepare, you know, this um, bean cake, my mind, and it has seven condiments. <laughs> Shrimps, <laughs> fish, <laughs> And the carrier sulfate was 
sat down, prayed over it. So I started, and I was, then I looked at her, and she took the first one. Ah, I said, sister, your cousin. So I said, That jinx was broken. Hold of that 
chimpanzee beats black and blue. Okay? If you grow up in Lagos, by the time you beat your opponent, you put sand in his mouth. <laughs> Especially if you grow up in the Campbell area. <laughs> okay? And he woke up. Alas, it was a dream. He was sweating. Then he went out that same day. Got to one of the places where he had placed his application. Said, so We have been waiting for you. You are resuming today. And they gave him a chair. He sat down first day. He said, you are resuming today. No interview. And he went to him and said, Lord, thank you for this. And the following day, when he got there again, he gave him a table. So chair and table. And gave him a supervisor. The third day, the supervisor came to him and said, we are going to reverse the role. Say so you are supposed to be the supervisor because your qualification is better than mine. Before the end of the week, they turn the company over to him. Clap if you want to. It was his pastor that told me this. In fact, you, when he told me, I was screaming. I said, please. Those were the days when I was drinking Coke. I said, please, can you order a Coke for me? I need to celebrate. It was too much a testimony. The devil was contending for that peak that God had prepared for him. Say with me, Father, Father in the name of Jesus,
then the spirit husband, spirit man, uh, spirit wife, and spirit children. Okay? Just to attack that life. There was a time, I don't know if my wife will remember, in faith clinic, in those days when we were ministering to a lady, a woman, her husband was there, and she has 12 children named after the 12 apostles. So each time we are talking, we say, you know, in malevolent voice, James, keep quiet. I'm talking to your, to your father. It was the water spirit. Her husband was looking like this. Is this the woman I marry? Yet they have no issue. But there are twelve spiritual. Children. Of course, in that ministry, we are stubborn. We don't give up until we see our patient delivered. There are cases that we will lead to the last minute where everybody would have gone. They are now still with that case. We call it star case. And then we can go and make sure that this fellow is. God delivered her and then she was free. And many people have been initiated into this, uh, you know, water spirit issue. How about at the ground level? That is the level of, you know, raising altars at different places. Three days ago, one of my associates called me. I said, this is what happened to me. I laugh. I said, do you know that's what we're going to teach in our Bible study today? What happened to him? He was going with his wife, you know, to one of these network providers. And a man who was driving across parked his car and came and was railing accusation against him and saying all manners of things. I said, that is definitely a reality for you. <laughs> and for that, there has been some opposition against him. So they carry the battle from the spirit realm to the physical. And I said to him, and I told him a few things to do. He has started on it already because he gave me a serious body. He's a man that God has anointed and he has a tremendous grace. But the devil has ganged up against him using lying spirits. <clears throat> what I call the scourging of the tongue. And David said, deliver me from the scourge of the tongue. Raising accusation against him. And I said, if you don't do this, what the devil wants to do is to take you out of that nation. It's not just a community. He wants to uproot you completely from that nation because he sees you as a force and a threat to what he had planned to do. He was tired. I said, don't be tired. We will come go and see that God, the reason why God sent you into that nation is established. He has grace. He has tremendous grace upon his life. But different opposition by just coming up against him. Why do the healings rage? Some of you wonder why are they saying things against you? If you sit down and analyze it, it is because there is a grace upon your life. I just told him the first thing to do. I said, break the voice box of the enemy. So that they will not be able to release information to the air again. So they bring the battle to that level. Now listen, please, very well at this point. Now this is the point, the ground level battle. After they would have concluded in the air, and that is the water, then the ground level is when the foot soldier will now move in. And the foot soldiers are the witches, the wizards, and their priests. And then they now begin to employ all kinds of things against you in your dream. And when, even when you are awake and you see different things around you, some of you see cobwebs. Well, cobwebs, maybe because the environment is dead. <laughs> because most of us are dirty and we say it's a demon. It is no demon. 
And these are the things they employ on your fine marks, laceration on your body. That is at the ground level. Or maybe when you sleep, you find yourself eating rice and beans. And do you? Okay. And by the time you wake up in the morning, you hear someone say, I school. Brother, they have concluded the matter. <laughs> Are you following? Yes. They ask you what are you having for breakfast this morning? You know, you said you know I'm food. Uh, Who gave you food? Uh, they are fed you in the night. That is at the ground level. It is because there is something in your life that they are contending with. But that will stop. Yeah. Pastor was talking about the communion and I pray you will understand what he was saying. When you come to that table, it nullifies so many demonic things. I remember one of our daughters in the Lord, many years ago, we served communion because, you know, she had compromised. She could not leave her seat. She was glued to the chair. Everybody had gone her parents were looking for her and until we went inside the auditorium and we found her inside. Glued to her chair. I said, stand up. I said, I can't stand. But there was no glue there. Only goes glue. And then we prayed. I said, Father, please release her. And that was when she was this is no story. Real. Huh? Another one, you know, had communion and then went out to have affairs. She ran bonkers. You remember? She just flipped. And her mother brought her to my house in every case they bring to the pastor. So cause them to, to melt. 
So when God wants to come in, now this is the area that we interest you and we're going to go into action. When God is coming to fight, I told you initially that you need to ask for his advocacy. And the moment you ask, God, take over my battle, then he comes with his military toga. The Bible said he's a man of war. Amen. Go with me to the book of Exodus. I love what I have there. Exodus chapter 15. Hallelujah. Amen. I read from verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Do we know that song? It's all of the Nephi. Can we sing it, please?
go to battle, do you go with bare hands? Or do you go with my thoughts? And the Bible tells me again in Jeremiah 50 25 that God has a place, a warehouse, a store where he puts his weapons. Jeremiah 50.25 If you find you can read it. The Lord hath opened his armory. Yes. And hath brought forth the weapons of his indignation. Yes. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts. Hallelujah. In the land of the chariots. Amen. Amen. The Lord has what? Say that again. The Lord has opened his armory. Uh -huh. And he has what? Dangerous weapons, skull missiles, ballistic weapons, and computerized weapons, targeting, biological weapons, AK-47, bazooka. Wow. I was teaching in a church some years ago here in this land. Every weekend we have a ministration. And one day I caught them to this level. I said, Now I want you to carry your AK 47 and I want you to shell every forces in your life all around. And there was this sister. She, she followed the teaching very well. And then when it was time, she, she positioned herself like that. Very hefty woman like that. And she, she was shedding. She was praying and shedding. You know, your gesticulation is not ordinary. When you are praying, when it is come, when it comes to the military, I mean spiritual oppression, when you are praying, whatever you think that is not just ordinary. Okay? And so she was she was being like that and was shedding. So I moved closer and said, sister, more, more, more. And <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and by the time we finished the ministration, I went to her. I said, one day, what's happening now? I saw you, you were sharing the I said, don't mind the devil. I need to finish his head. <laughs> I love people who have that military, you know, orientation. Who are aggressive? Who is not saying devil? I bet big me alone. No. <laughs> it will fry you like a <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be violent. <clears throat> One of our brothers is a missionary now. A wonderful man of God. The day we were to minister deliverance to him on the campus he was in the Kegites. You know, that's the Panwai uh, <laughs> drinker's claw. But when God delivered him, we know the spirit of Bacchus has to go out of his life. All the jamblayos. <laughs> <laughs> and the wokedi. So we said we're going to woked everything out. So I was upset. I happened to be among the team ministering to him. And that's why I know what you do in the physical has a spiritual connotation. I was upset at a point. I said, you this foul demon, if you don't leave, I will blast your head. His eyes was closed. But he said, he saw a pistol in my hand. So he was praying, let Bradito not blast my head. <laughs>
And because the Lord has said, He has taught your hands to war mm -hmm. and your fingers to fight. Mm -hmm. And you just touch, just one finger, mm -hmm. and you just touch here, and you find him screaming. Just a finger. And you say, He's burning, He's burning. So God has thrown your finger to fire. I'm amazed. That's the mystery of God. Or you touch somebody on either side like this, and then you vomit, and by the time you know you, you see the object, it's a drink. Say, Lord, Lord. Some weapons. There are some weapons. 
ones that you know, but there are some other dangerous weapons. Thunder happens to be one of them. Our God is a God of thunder. He doesn't belong to Shango. It belongs to God. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, he said, God will thunder over our adversaries. Amen. I thought you would say amen. amen. Some strange things will happen amen. in the camp of your contenders amen. this morning. Amen. He will send lightning. Amen. He will send tempests. Amen. Jesus had prayed. She screamed in 
are delivered from sin. And mass, they came to, to, to know the Lord. Some of them are pastors now. There was one notorious lady in their midst that we took as a project, my wife and I. I said, we're going to adopt this girl. Let's call her my girlfriend. But we're praying. And there is, there is nobody, no man in that area that she has not slept with or has not slept with her. So useless. But we knew it was a demon. She was among those that God saved. Because immorality is the operation of the witches. Time will not permit us to go into the operation of the details of it. Fornicating, eh? something moved me. Something, something. <laughs> God delivered that lady. Those who have been struggling with their academics, suddenly their mind opened. Because there was a mind-binding spirit that sat over them, they would struggle and struggle and struggle. Maybe it was one of them that was struggling with me with probability. <laughs> and then one over. But <laughs> oh God, God delivered me. I was concerned about the youth of that community. And God delivered them. Suddenly, those who have been struggling to travel abroad for further studies, they, they got through. God has winds. There are different kinds of winds. There is this wind. I was teaching in Leicester the other day among the pastors. And there was this elderly man there, over 80. The man did not sleep all through. Actually, I told the coordinator, after one hour, I'm going to go. But as he was hearing, the thing was sweetening him more and more. There's no English that is sweet, you know. <laughs> okay. This morning, every containers of your life, at your workplace, in your office, in your family, the history will be 